Welcome to a new video. Um, today I'm going to talk about something, um, let's call it uh, more grounded. It's all about control apps today. So uh, I decided to make this video because I recognize that a lot of people don't know what you can do with console apps and how to make them uh, similar in the startup and in the configuration stuff uh, to web apps, uh, which are all used to. So this video um, shows you some possibilities you have now, explains a little bit the, the evolution of console apps and what you see if you hit .NET New or whatever. And with that, let's get started. Um, so um, I am going to start um, at the console here and I'm going to do a pretty plain .NET New console. Uh, so let's name it console sample, whatever. And let's go into that folder. And let's uh, look, take a look at this using VS Code first. So what you get basically, as you might know, is now this from, I think, C Sharp 9 on. This is possible. It's called top level statements. And uh, regarding or um, according to Microsoft, it is all about making uh, as least boilerplate as, uh, boilerplate, sorry, um, as possible so that developers don't get distracted. You can read about this here. And, um, you know, just quick um, side note from me. I don't think that this is the best idea they ever had um, because, you know, I know what's going on because I'm like 20 plus years into development. But uh, people, let me bring my face in here, uh, but um, a lot of people don't know what's going on. Uh, and especially newbies into .NET, they will think like, oh, okay, I can just can write code, whatever. Um, and then they get exceptions. Uh, and in those exceptions, um, all of a sudden they see um, program CS in whatever, um, and main method and whatever, and they don't even know what's going on. So I'm not sure if I like it, I understand it, I use it um, too. But let me quickly show, let me get my face out of the way again, and let me quickly show uh, what you can do to get to the old uh, days. So let's go back and let's um, remove this folder and do it again. Uh, .NET new, but now use this option, which is use program main, uh, which is there in the template. Uh, so if you do it this way this time, and let's go to the sample folder again, open up and code. And what you get now is the old way, kind of. So this is not using top level statement. You see that there is a class and a static void main, which get passed in arguments. And I think it's clearer and more transparent in terms of what's going on. And that is why I'm going to stick with this sample. Okay, nice. So. This talk is all about why it might not be a good idea to start a console app like this, what you um, see a lot in the internet, even in the Microsoft documentation, they claim that this would be the starting point. And I say, no, uh, you shouldn't do it. At least you shouldn't do it when it comes to, let's say, real apps, which you want to use. So this uh, brings me to a little discussion, a little side note again, why would I use console apps? in the first place. So what is it all about? There are um, some scenarios where you could use them. For instance, I recently had a console app, which um, is just simply an import job. And it's sitting, uh, it's built into a uh, container image, which is then deployed to Azure to run as an Azure container instance. And it's called PyLogic app on a regular base. So it's just a, a program spinning up, doing its job, and then shutting down. And that's perfect suitable for this scenario. And the best way to do it is a console app because every time the main method is exited, the complete thing shuts down, uh, isn't consuming any anything in Azure, for instance, in this case, and it's perfect. Another example is, let me show you uh, maybe um, another thing, which is uh, a project I did, uh, git dd, Let's go to my repositories and there I have this one thing, which is a tool. You can install it with a .NET tool install and everything is explained here. I even made a video and this is a console app, which helps you transforming from the current 
uh, NuGet default format where you have the versions in your C's project file over to the upcoming .NET, uh, no, NuGet central package management. So that is what it's doing. And it is a console app, which by the way, uses Spectre console, a NuGet package I'm gonna explain in another video. But anyway, all I uh, wanna say here is that console apps are still a legit thing. So you can use them uh, for certain scenarios. But as I said, go back to the screen, this is not the best way, in my opinion, to start a console app, which meant to run seriously uh, something. So what you should do instead is, and let me close Visual Studio Code from now on. If you are here, what you should do is you should use a NuGet package, which comes from Microsoft. And this NuGet package brings you a lot of comfort into your console apps. Let me show you. You sh just said this line. So I'm basically adding a NuGet package to my project here and uh, giving it uh, the name Microsoft Extension Hosting. So this is something you can get from NuGet. I'm just doing it. That's it. You see my German output here. But anyway, and now let's open this whole thing in Rider. So it will take some seconds to open to spin up. Trust. Okay, there we go. Now we are seeing this project in Rider. Could open it in Visual Studio, but Rider opens a little bit quicker than Visual Studio. Uh, and let me zoom a little bit so you guys can see. So as I said, this is not what I'm going to use. So let me first explain uh, what this new NuGet package, which I, oh, I have to switch on this. So this is my NuGet package I brought in. Okay, cool, Microsoft Extension Hosting. Let me show you what this brings. So this brings um, a class which is called host. Uh, so here it is, host dot. And now it's bringing in, whoa, it's bringing in here the using. And this has one interesting method for us, create default builder, which we, by the way, can pass the arguments which we got from the uh, console. So from the um, uh, startup of our app, we um, can pass it to the default builder. You will see later why this could be a nice thing. And this is generating um, uh, an iHost builder. So what I could do is var builder equals this. So now builder is an iHost builder. Even better, this iHost builder has right away a build method because it's a builder, it should be able to build something. Now this build method returns an iHost. Now it's not a builder anymore, it's a host now. Okay, nice. So first step succeeded. The next logical thing would be to start this thing. Okay, and I will show this um, and let me put a console write line um, uh, done here at the end so that you can see that this is kind of senseless, okay? So let me debug this here in Rider. And now after a little while, it will switch over to the console. And as you can see, now you see the done, but nothing happens, okay? Host start and nothing happens. Okay, that is interesting, we are done, and that's it. So host start is um, giving us nothing. So let, let's remove this for the oh no, Let's leave it here and let's explain why host start is there in the first place. So if you are familiar to ASP.NET projects, you might uh, notice that there is the possibility to bring in processes which should run in the background. For instance, if you want to do long running operations um, in ASP.NET projects, you could use an interface which is called I um, hosted service. And this interface brings you a pro, uh, thread which runs in the background, which is not dependent on calls coming in. And you could use this to run like watching a queue or whatever is going on. So we can do exactly the same now here. So let me just show you what I mean. So I have the class, which is called my service. I just implementing it as I hosted service. And it's implementing this interface, which demands it to implement at least start asing and stop asing. And as you can see, it just writes starting and stopping. Okay, nice. So the moment you have this, what you can do is you can do dependency injection here by using configure services, a method of the builder. 
and it has uh, if you want to the host uh, this the context and the services I think which can be and uh, copilot already tried to help me out there it is uh, so this is the method and I need to implement um, here dependency injection but now I'm not using CTX currently I could use it this way just ignore the variable so now I'm telling the configuration system which means the dependency injection of .NET hey I have this I hosted service I want you to configure it okay so now when I host start we should see a different behavior so let's start out okay let's go so now what we see is we get a uh, host start. Where is it? Where's my uh, console here? And now uh, application started. Okay, nice. Uh, hosting environment is production, which is weird because it's not. But anyway, I uh, explain later what it is. It's calling starting here right away here because at this moment it started the background operation and then host start uh, runs uh, and uh, it's stopping. So another way to do this in order to avoid our console application simply uh, stopping after it starts something is to use the run method, which is another thing, not starting, but running. Watch what the difference is, debug. So now it's sitting here, starting was called, so this got, got called, but he never stopped it. So he never reached done yet. So until the point where I stop with control C and now we get on the console, where is it here? We get stopping, which is first of all this one. And now we get done, which is our last line and then our program stops. So this is what you could get uh, by using the host builder. My this is not what this talk is about. I just want to explain that you could write a background uh, service which is running in the console, giving you output in the console, but just by using the iHosted service. But let me just right away de delete this, delete this line and delete this line because we are not running the host. We just want to use the host and um, after we build it to help us out with certain things. Okay, nice. So what can we do now? Um, we could take a new class and let me bring in a new class, which is called my app. I'm just making this thing up. Okay. It's a class. So I give it a method, uh, which is, um, task int, uh, start as a, there it is. So this is what I have and I will console right line, uh, hello world like in the default, and then I return uh, task from result zero. So this is what I do. I will explain what the zero means later and so on. So this is my class. It's just a class, nothing else. So now I'm going here into my service configuration and I'm saying, hey, you know what? Dependency injection. Can you give me a singleton of the my app whenever I demand um, that I want one. So what does this line mean? So we're going to the host and telling him, can you please keep in mind that there is this type, my app, which might be needed or requested in the future. And if somebody requests it, I want you to deliver always the same instance. So only create an instance if somebody, if the first caller wants it and if the second caller wants one and the third and so on, always deliver this first instance. Don't create any more new my apps. Okay, nice. Next thing is I'm demanding from the host, which is built. Okay, from the host, I am demanding a service which I configured previously. I am demanding it because it is required by me right now. So it should raise an exception if there is no my app available, if he does not know what this is. And now I'm not saying give me the same instance like the one before, if there's one, blah, blah, blah. I'm relying here on get required service on the configuration I made earlier. 
to in order to make sure that they always get the same my app okay cool so this is now my app because i got it and what i can do now is var result equals app dot start async and because it's async i can change my main method to be an async task of int okay nice and then i can use await because i have async now in place and after everything is done i can return the result you will see later why this return is pretty important okay now what i have i have a lot of code which is like a configuration of the host then i have get the app using the host use the app and do stuff on shutdown oh, where it is okay that's a lot of stuff for writing at the end console write line hello world to the console okay but let bear with me let me first of all start this and see if it's behaving like we want it so now we have hello world and done that's nice um but we could achieve this with just one line right uh, but what do we get here so let me explain this line because it's only one command brings a lot more than is visible to the naked eye so let me show you what i mean a pretty common task here in a thing like this is to use dependency injection if it's not in the console app so let's say i want to access um some stuff like a logger okay i need a logger i need to log so the normal way to do it is hey i want a logger for my class my app which is important because otherwise it fails and i want this to be the logger so now reshop i can kick in and generate a constructor for us which has the dependency injection in place and says okay i got it this is ilogger it's not nullable this means the most logical thing for reshop is you probably want it to be injected at construction time okay we do it and now let's check if this logger is really there here it is logger log information uh, let's let's do it this way this is a log message so that we just can distinguish still we want to write to the console uh, but then we want to lock to um, whatever lock is configured keep in mind that we never configured any locks we just called this line and then we told it to give us a app and then let's go okay debug this and now let's see what we get so what we get is we get wait it out okay we get hello world which is clear but now we get this you know asp.net web app like experience that the console logger which is what you see here this is what the console logger is doing is putting out an info message with the message this is a log message and of course i could do warn or arrow or whatever now without me configuring anything that is actually pretty nice i think um i could although i could configure the logging so let's say I'm not, and it's uh, uh, logging thing this way. So what I could do is logging. I could clear all existing logging providers. So telling him, forget about logging. Okay, you don't know how to log. And then I could say, you know, at console is probably what you had because this in the background is a console logger. I don't want this. I want debug logging. So that's the only logging I want to have. Please do not log to console only. This is clear whatever you have. Only log to debug. Okay, now let's try again. Let's debug this. Okay, no log in the console, but in the debug output here, I can see now my log message. Okay, let me pause here for a minute. This already, what you see now, should convince you that in any real life console application, this should be the way to go this is already nice okay just logging is nice because logging is so important and it's forgotten because it's complicated to set up correctly if you don't have something in place like the create uh, create default builder thing 
and it's nearly effortless logging if you want the default logging. Okay, cool. This is what we what we know now. Another cool thing is that because this looks like the ASP.NET configuration, you can basically say it is the same configuration system. So what we can do is the following. We can add something we can we know from ASP.NET, which is app settings JSON. Okay, let's add here. If you don't know what this is, never mind, then probably you're not interested in. But you can see value one is uh, coding freaks. And value two is please subscribe. So a little bit of advertisement here. I I think I do this not, not much. Um, and I think it's a mistake. Okay, I'm not changing anything here. The only thing I ensure, right click this file, go to properties. This is writer, okay? Set this to content. Where is it? Here. And set this to copy if newer. So those two settings, if I hit now OK, are doing something in my project file, which is this one here. Uh, let me remove this line. So they set this to content, include the app settings, and copy to output directory whenever the one in this folder is newer than the one in the output directory, which is the bin folder. Okay, nice. That's all. That is no code at all. I did nothing here. I changed nothing. But what I can do now in my application class, here, I can say, you know what I want? I want to have access to the I configuration, which is an interface, no, not more. Please do it in the constructor. And now I can do my, uh, let's do the following. Uh, let's do, yeah, configuration app value one and where am I? I need a curly brace here and value two behind this. Let's see what comes out in the console now. Debug. So here you go. Coding freaks, please subscribe. Coming out of the app settings. Okay. Um, without me doing anything other than putting in a file, which is app settings.json, making it copied over to my output directory, that's it. And it gets better than this. Let's say we want to use another feature, which we are pretty familiar with in um, ASP.NET, which is stage-based uh, settings files, like .development. Here we go. So um, if you are a developer, whatever. So. And now we have this app settings development file. I copied it over. I need to go here in writer. This is kind of, you know, this is content update. I want to be content in include app settings development, do the same thing with this guy. And now I need to add something more because if I just fire it up, it will not change the message. It will still say coding freaks, please subscribe. So it's not taking this one. By the way, I can remove this. So value two should be overwritten. Value one should be exactly what it is in the app settings. That's the idea here. Okay, cool. So what I need to do is I need to go to InWriter to my configuration. This is uh, what probably normally is uh, under properties. The what is it? What is it called? I forgot. There's a file in normal projects. I will look it up uh, in a second where you can put something like environment variables. .NET environment equals development. This is what I tell him. So I'm basically telling writer, whenever somebody debugs this, please, before you start the process, ensure that the session, the process will run in, will have the environment variable .NET environment set to development. That is what I tell him. So let's see, this sometimes goes wrong in my samples. No, this time not. So build in, guys. 
This is built in. This means he already understands that now the environment is not production anymore, it is development. So he automatically takes this file, which all of, of which is coming from this one line from the create host builder. I don't have to do anything here. I would not have to do it. The only thing I need to do is this so that I get my app. That is nice. So let me show you that even doing your own dependency injection is pretty easy here. So let's go and add a directory to make it a little bit nicer called interfaces. And let's call add an interface um, I calculator. I don't know. I need to do it this way. So um, um, what is it? It should be int and then it should be um, get result of a and b. That's what it is. That's my interface. And then I go here and I add a new folder uh, which is called implementations, whatever. And then I go some calculator. This is my first calculator. It implements I calculator, which needs to be implemented. And then doing one plus B. Okay, that's it. Pretty dumb. So now that I have uh, my own interface and implementation, I go to my program where I configure everything. And I say, you know what, uh, services, at transient. If you need an I calculator, use the sum calculator. That is what I tell him. Okay, nice. Now I decided which calculator to take. I only have one. Okay, cool. So in my app now, I simply do the same approach which I did all the time. So private I calculate. I need some calculator. I don't know which one because I'm just, you know, the program. I'm not the configuration. I'm not deciding which calculator it is. I'm just using one and I want it to be passed in in the constructor. Okay, so now what I can do, uh, I can go to the, let's say here, um, at uh, one more line. Let's say console write line, result is a result of uh, let's say 5 and 10 is, it's pretty dumb. Uh, calculator, uh, get result, 5 and 10. And I think you know what's coming up, okay? It should be 15 in the second line after the hello world reading line. And uh, there it is, 15, because it's a calculator. And um, that's it. So... Uh, now, with this in place, if you now look at my program uh, class, it kind of is a little bit, might be gets confusing because, you know, you kind of oversee this important thing, which is not a problem. You could, without any problem, go and extract this line of code. Let me show you how. Uh, what I usually do, I'm adding another folder here. This is already talking about a little advancement. Okay, so let's call this extensions. And let's call this um, configuration extensions. So what I do, I make this class static. And if, if you want to know more about this, what you see right now, leave a command and I'm if, if there are any needs, I will tell you more about this. But if you know what extension methods are, I'm not going to explain this. Public, let's do it void. Um, configure services, this, which is uh, the, the main thing. I service collection, I think. Um, services. And then uh, I public static, I forgot static. So now I go to my program and this is what I need to do. Uh, services, where is this? This is coming from here. And now I could, uh, you know what I could do? Yeah, I could, where is it? Host, yeah. I could write out this here. Bring in my missing files. Okay, there it is. This is my uh, configuration extension. And now what I need to do is services dot 
configure services. So now I'm using my method. Let me put a breakpoint here so that you can see it at work. Debug. So that you can see it's just a refactoring and it's not the only one possible, but you know, it's kind of, so I'm here. And now if I step into, he's going into my new method in the extensions, just like that. Uh, let me step over here. And the main reason for doing an extension method of configure services is that I can call it on services as if it, it's always been a member configure services uh, on services. So to make things a little bit clearer for you, I could say configure my services so that you can see that this is clearly not a method which is coming out of the .NET framework. So now configure my services. The same could be done with logging. So um, um, I could, logging is what I logging builder. I'm just going here and saying, you know what? Let me configure my logging. I logging builder. Uh, that's what passed in builder. And now what I just say, yeah, exactly. Please do this. Copilot kicks in. So configure my logging, please. And now I can use this in logging, configure my logging. That's exactly just me taking out the stuff from here to another place. Okay, that's that's what I do. So from now on, in order to do configuration, adding services, whatever, I don't need to uh, tender around with my program class. In fact, I can leave it alone um, forever so I can close it. And all I have to do is configuring everything in my app for control flow. So this thing is for the flow of my app itself. And this is logic interfaces and so on and configuration as you expect. So let me have a quick talk about this result here. So let me um, show you the differences, which is easier to see if we do it in the console. Okay. So what happens if I do .NET run? So as you can see, my console is, my console is happy and telling me with this symbol, the last command exited. So if I'm doing something stupid, he says this is an exception and my terminal will show me a red one, meaning that the last command failed. CLS is valid. This is not failing. Cool. So this means whatever happened, it went okay. Why is that? Well, let me show you if I switch to, to a number which is not zero, let's say one, I don't care. Let's run my program again. And all of a sudden this is red. Okay. This is red because we are returning one and not zero. And then our program is taking the res result and using uh, this result as its return value of the main method, which is called the exit code of the application. And it's defined in operating systems, in most operating systems I'm aware of, that an exit code which differs from zero means something went wrong. You can decide what this means, if it's one or minus one or whatever. So this is what you do in order to inform your whatever called you if this happens to be successful or not. So this is why returning is always a good idea. Uh, and why this is a most logical pattern than just, you know, let the program end without any um, special handling. Anyways, so um, I think, let me bring in my face again. I think today's episode showed that it's worth to think about uh, having the default builder, the host in place for your console apps Remember, I'm not saying console right line, bare right line is a bad thing. I'm saying it might be a bad thing, or I think it's a bad thing, if you use it for productive apps or something which is more than just right line, hello world, or whatever, test things out. Um, yes, um, this is what I wanted to show. Um, next time, when we talk about console applications, I want to do more stuff about, um, you know, the visual and the tooling of console application because it can get a little bit hard to write a cool console application in .NET. 
Um, I will show you some uh, cool stuff depending on the um, Spectre console. Oh, my hair. Which one? This one. Oh, I have confused hair. You see this? Anyway, uh, I will show this uh, to you. I hope this was interesting. And um, let me know in the comments if uh, you want to see more content about this more low concept stuff. And uh, I will see what I can do. Uh, see you next time. Bye.